This week on Sailor Stories, we are with Jeff and Paul on their Leopard 58 Captain, sailing around the Caribbean and across the Atlantic. Okay, so we are here with uh, Paul and Jeff on the beautiful uh, Leopard 58, and um, they just crossed the Atlantic, so they are just, just like us. Let's uh, go back to the beginning. Uh, when did you actually buy your boat? We actually were sitting here probably three years ago, actually in Tercera in Azores, and uh, kind of came to the conclusion we were going to try this. And uh, from there, we put an order in actually on a new lagoon. And uh, after a bunch of him and Han and some things with the lagoon, we ended up with a Leopard 58. Went to South Africa, saw it being built, went to, uh, had it brought over to Lauderdale, took possession of it in March 2019. Why did you choose such a big boat? Because this is a big boat, let's be honest. 58 uh, feet, it's, it's a, a big boat. Oh, it's beautiful, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Well, that's, a, that's an odd question, or a good question. Um, and that's my problem. You know, <laughs> I'm taking my family out of this large house, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, if we're going to do this lifestyle, if it doesn't have a lot of the amenities we had in the house, they're not going to go. Mm -hmm. Mama's not going to want to come. They're the kids are going to be miserable. They're not going to buy into it. Yeah. So we really looked for, and we heard everybody say, you're going to learn to sail whatever you have. So we really dis, you know, discarded the start small, start slow, and we just said, forget it. We're going to go with what we want. So we actually, what sold us to the boat, frankly, wasn't necessarily so much the size as it was on the Leopard 58. You've got a separate living space from a eating space, from a kitchen space. Um, I mean, it's just fantastic. It's, just it's like, actually like a proper house, isn't uh -huh. it? That it's was, like a proper that was house. The biggest thing. Yeah. You know, and of course, you know, you have all the all the regular amenities everybody else has. You know, the washer dryer, the satellite internet, the mm -hmm. dishwasher, all the regular things. And the upstairs too. Built in, thing, built in masseuse, jacuzzi tubs, you know. Yeah, <laughs> this, butler, is this is my tub. Butler. So, how much sailing experience have you actually had when you got around to taking delivery of <laughs> this yacht in Fort Lauderdale? Uh, frankly, we've done cruises on uh, Norwegian cruise lines, a couple of those. Yeah, it's not really sailing. No, though, no, 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 <laughs> but uh, you know, we did go to Skipper School. We went to uh, Fort Lauderdale. We did a week on a cat, the mm -hmm. two of us with a few other few other people. And we and survived. It was awesome. We mm -hmm. had a blast. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, we uh, literally took that seven days of training. Did you and get your skipper's license there? Or? Yeah, yeah, well, you did. the yeah. ASA, all the ASA courses okay. for mm -hmm. bare boat, you know, if they go let us get a bare boat charter. Mm -hmm. And frankly, that was it. I think, oh, actually, before, when we went to South Africa to see the boat being built, we went to Italy, got a boat. We weren't captaining it. We were, we were just uh, passengers on it. We did a week in Italy on a Leopard 48 on our way to South Africa to see this one being built. So that literally was the entire extent experience. of our experience. We've never owned a boat other than a cruise ship, never been so on a boat. So what was it like the very first day you went out when, you know, you got this brand spanking boat, <laughs> absolutely immaculate, <laughs> and you've got to get it off the quay with the family and... Yeah, it was, so we have three kids and they're older. I mean, they were 12, 12, 12 or 11, 11, 13 and 17 at the time. And, you know, we actually did what I call docking school. So we literally had all of us on the dock. We had our lines, you know, because we were on, it was, you know, Dania Beach is a, is a where you've got the big um, wooden piers yeah. with mm -hmm. no dock. And yeah. you've got to lasso them and unlasso them. And so we did, how do you, how do you get off the dock and on the, because we had to go to the fuel dock. So how do we get off the dock and on the dock? How do we do it without jumping off the boat? How do we lasso the cleat? How do we, you know, get the boat ready to come off the dock without, you know, by having, bringing the line back to the boat? And uh, we practiced that for probably an hour and came up with a plan and out we went. And frankly, it was like we've been doing it a million times. And we didn't hit Excellent. anything. Yeah. And you didn't hit anything. No the, damage. The, the only thing we learned was going to the fuel dock. You know, the, my, my advice as the captain was just get the boat stopped. Don't worry about making it pretty. Don't worry about making it sexy. Just get the boat stopped. So as we come up to the, up to the fuel station in Dania Cut, you know, she's up on the front and she's just really excited. She's so excited. She's been practicing her lassoing, throwing tools, and you know, she's playing her cowboy thing up. And so she grabs the very first pylon. We're still in the channel. And so I'm like, okay, maybe let's wait until we get up a bit so we can figure out where the fuel goes on the boat. And so that was probably the first first thing we did, but it was actually kind of comical. <laughs> so since you got the boat, uh, where have you been? And uh, roughly sort of how many miles have you done on this journey? Oh, so we left, I mean, we had a lot of work to do to the boat, as you know, um, mm. you know, the lesson we learned is 
the boat takes a lot of work initially. Yeah, um, even when you buy a new boat, it still has a lot of work to do. Oh, incredible yeah. amount of work. It's yeah. not just the work that they, I mean, I think the manufacturers do an incredible job. I think the hulls are fantastic, the fit and finish is fantastic, but they put so many other people's things into the boat that sometimes not so fantastic. So a lot of little things that they've got to go back and constantly touch mm -hmm. and mess with and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were three months on the dock probably just getting the solar installed, the satellite installed, all the extra things. Because our original plan was to come to the Azores. I mean, that was kind of, we had kind of a two part plan. We wanted to go to Maine, because that's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to come to the Azores. So we, because that's, that's, where, that's where, where she's from. Where she's from, yeah. And so we, and the kids were with us through the whole thing and they've, they've been exceptional. Um, they make great crew, they make great cleaners. That's the best part. <laughs> um, so, we literally pulled out of the dock and we just started making our way north. We went, you know, kind of Florida, all the way, to all the way up to actually we went up to went into the um, up, up into the, the Chesapeake. River. And of course, you hear things like Cape Fear and stuff, and you're like, oh, this is going to be horrible. But it was it was a, it was a nice trip up. Um, got up into went up to Washington D.C., went up the Potomac, all the way up to D.C. Mm -hmm. Uh, for Fourth of July, which was really cool for the kids, came back down, did Annapolis, did the CD Canal. You did New York as well, didn't you? And then we went yeah. from the CD Canal. We went down yeah. the um, the Delaware and yeah. up into New York. We anchored in the Hudson yeah. at the 79th Street Boat Basin for ten days. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. It must fantastic. Be, it must be very and then you went all the way back down to Florida. No, no, no. Then we went up up the East River to Long Island Sound and all the way up to Maine. We spent the summer in Maine. Okay. And we did Boston, Portland. Um, actually had to have the boat hauled out to get some work done. Some additional things that we recognized on the trip that were like, it'd be nice if we had this or had that. So we went up to, uh, mm -hmm. ended up at Falmouth, did that. And then it started getting cold and we raced back down to Annapolis for the boat show and from the boat show back to Lauderdale to get our last of our, we were pushing our year then, more get our more warranty work done and add some more things for the crossing. And then, you know, we went all the way down, got to the Dominican Republic, Luperon, um, after doing the Bahamas, and we got stuck there for three months for COVID. Mm -hmm. And then we were done. We were we were really looking at, we weren't coming across the Atlantic. We originally were going to do the ARC. Um, they canceled the ARC, and we're like, crap. Now what are we gonna do? <laughs> so we're sitting there. We got all the everybody else is sitting around us. Most some of them cruisers, most of them full time live aboards, actually in the Dominican, and. Uh, we had a couple couples there, two boats there, one a couple boat and one a single boat. And they said, hey, if you guys make the decision to go, we'll go with you. And at that time, you know, the Dominican was closed, the Azores was closed, Bermuda was closed, as you guys know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we just couldn't figure out a way to do it. And then we started seeing, well, you know, maybe in June things are going to start loosening up and maybe July it's going to get looser. And so we just did the gamble. We're like, you know what, forget it. And we bypassed Bermuda and just did 20 days mm -hmm. nonstop from the Dominican to here, yeah. pulled into Horta. And so roughly how many miles have you clocked up? Any idea? We're, we're at just, just over 11,000 miles right now. Wow, that's good. That's, that's good right. going. We, we just have a short period of time. Yeah, we just have two rules. Don't hit things and keep it this side of the water line. <laughs> and so far... <laughs> keep the crew inside. Yeah, keep the crew on the boat. Keep We've done well. So how, about it? How, how is it to be with the kids on board? Because you have three, but one left to college. Yeah, yeah. Garrett is in college uh, this year, so he left us. Mm -hmm. And the I other we two... Left him. Well, yeah, we I guess we left the him. <laughs> and then Chloe and Corbett, they just... They like to go to different places. They like... How is it to homeschooling? Or? Well, we do the online schooling, so it's kind of like a private school. Mm -hmm. So they have their own teachers. I just need to make sure that they're actually doing mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. Some days a little bit challenging. But do but they do they have um, an attitude for themselves to go and just do the work they have to do on that day, or you have to <laughs> be supervising? Well, and depends. <laughs> depends on the depends. day. No, it depends on the kid. <laughs> depends which kid. Uh, normally, I have to be more on top of uh, the youngest one, Corbin. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Chloe pretty much does the stuff that she needs to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having been doing this now for what is it, eighteen months? Yeah. And uh, if you were talking to somebody who was thinking about having this type of lifestyle and doing this, what would, what would your main tips be? What would you advise them to do? You know, I read a lot of people asking the question. I read a lot of people, oh, we're going to go out in two years, three years, five years. Everybody, I think, just overthinks it. I think it's mm -hmm. something you just go do. Mm -hmm. You know, buy what you can afford, buy less than you can afford, because it is, it is, because a, it's, you're going to spend a lot You're going to spend a we, lot We actually more. went a, a year early, didn't we? We, we went we, a year yeah, early. Yeah, yeah, we so weren't going like, to. I agree with you. Yeah. But yeah. most people yeah. never go. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, yeah. and then, and then I find so many people get, get the boat, they're scared to leave. Mm. 
and so they sit on the dock. So it's a reason to put off, isn't it? It's There's always, always a, a reason. Just go. So you have to go. You just really go. have to make the decision yeah. and go. Yes. And it, you yes. know, frankly, you know, the, the hardest part is leaving, but the best part is getting there. And the part in the middle, sometimes it's fun, sometimes not so much. But yeah. it, once you get to where you're going, all of that is forgotten. We've had some uh, quite bad experiences on our way around. But as soon as you arrive, you forget about it, don't Completely. you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we, oh, we've had places, we've pulled in. I remember we pulled into my iguana in the Bahamas. And we pulled in there uh, and we, we said, just, all right, we're never leaving. This is yeah. home. <laughs> we're, we're, now bohemian. <laughs> we're never we leaving again. <laughs> is that your favorite place so far? Uh, actually, my favorite place, my favorite place has been New York. Maine was fantastic, yeah. but I loved, home. I loved Maine. Yeah, New York, I just New York, was so New York was just cool because we were right downtown Manhattan. We weren't, you oh, know, the, two hundred yards was from from the from the Parkway, yeah, right right next wonderful. to Central Park. I mean, everything. It was just, I've never been to New York City. Mm -hmm. I mean, trans trucking is my business, and we don't. There's no trucking in New York. It's all in Jersey. So I know Jersey well, but I've never been to New York. So that was that was kind of surreal seeing all the downtown. We probably put. 10,000 miles on our feet. On yeah, that was one. a lot of walking. That was a lot of walking. And how is socializing? It's good, isn't it? It's socializing is fantastic. The best part, I think. Yeah. But you, you find there's different people. Just yeah, because yeah, people have yeah. boats doesn't mean they're all the same people. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. But you learn so much and you get yeah. so much enrichment. And, and, in, and in fact, we've had a lot of, um, a lot of surprises. You know, frankly, most of the people that we meet aren't Americans. And, you know, just the love of the world and how people engage and how they started and their stories. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. We had a few couples that was from the U.S., like Coco. Yeah. No, we've had, no, we've had some Americans. But, but, but most of them are. But most from. of our American friends think we're absolutely lunatics for trying to cross the Atlantic. You know, what do you mean you're not going to do the Caribbean? But there's so much history here. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you've, you've had some videos of where we are. I mean. Yeah. This is incredible. I mean, Christopher Columbus stopped in this port. He got yeah. stuck in this port for months yeah. um, prior to crossing and finding the New World. Yeah. We got married. This is actually where we got married is on this island. Mm -hmm. And we got married in a church where his his crew stayed when they got stuck here. Yeah. I mean, it's very, I mean, that's, that kind of history for the kids. Yeah. And again, the beaches are fantastic. The water's fantastic in the Caribbean. But you know what? There's more. And we yeah. have kids. And, yeah. and the history of stuff is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll find there'll be a lot more of that in your room. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's quite stunning. From Plus the food, you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, for for one you. fat guy. <laughs> thank you very, very much yeah, for letting us you. know. And uh, we wish you best of luck on your journey. Well, thank You're you, welcome, guys. It's been nice you. hanging out with you. Cheers.